Welcome to this lecture about the probability of committing a type 1 error. Recall that the type 1 error is an error we make if we incorrectly reject a true null hypothesis. The probability that we commit a type 1 error is equal to the significance level that we set for our test. The significance level, alpha, is therefore the probability for type 1 error given that the null hypothesis is true. Usually, we set the value of alpha to 0 0.05, which means that we accept that it's a 5% risk that we incorrectly reject the null hypothesis if it is true. If we, for example, increase the value of alpha to 0 0.1, this means that we now accept that it's a 10% risk that we commit a type 1 error if the null hypothesis is true. However, in statistics, it is common that we like to be 95% sure about things. If we set alpha to 5%, that means that we are 95% certain that we do not commit a type 1 error if the null hypothesis is true. To understand the probability of a type 1 error, let's go back to our example from the previous lecture, where we discussed type 1 and 2 errors. In this example, the mean heights of people living in population A and B are exactly the same. We therefore know that the following null hypothesis is true, since the mean body height in population A is equal to the mean body height in population B. However, let's take a sample of four individuals from each population. Based on the sample data, we use an unpaired t-test to compute the p-value. We see that the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, which means that we do not reject the true null hypothesis. Then we draw a new sample again, and compute the p-value. This p-value is also greater than 0 0.05, which means that we do not reject the true null hypothesis. So far, we have not made any type 1 errors. We then pick four new individuals from the populations again. However, this time, we happen to pick four individuals from population A that were relatively tall, and four individuals from population B that were relatively short. Due to the big difference in the sample means, the p-value is now smaller than 0 0.05, which means that we reject the null hypothesis. We have therefore just committed a type 1 error, because we rejected a true null hypothesis. If we continue this process, for example 10,000 times, we will get 10,000 p-values. These p-values come from our previous three examples, whereas this is the last p-value out of the 10,000 p-values. Out of the 10,000 p-values, we expect that 5% of these are, by chance, less than 0.05 which means that we expect to see 500 p-values that are less than 0.05 and 9,500 p-values that are greater than 0.05. If we plot the distribution of these 10,000 p-values, we see that they are uniformly distributed like this. Remember that a p-value is always a value between 0 and 1. Since we have 20 bars in this histogram with a width of 0 0.05, we expect that the bars have a height of 500. However, due to chance, there is some variation around 500. In this example simulation, 501 p-values out of the 10,000 p-values were less than 0 0.05. We have therefore made 501 type 1 errors out of the 10,000 tests. If we instead would have set our alpha value to 0 0.1, we expect that 10% of the p-values would be less than 0 0.1. In this simulation, 963 p-values out of the 10,000 were less than 0 0.1. Note that if the null hypothesis is true, the p-values are uniformly distributed between 0 and 1 whereas the t-statistics are approximately normally distributed since we sampled from a normal distribution. For more information, watch the lecture about the center limit theorem and the video about the t-distribution. To summarize, 
if you perform an experiment where the null hypothesis is true, the significance level that we choose will determine the probability that we commit a type 1 error. If we choose a significance level of 0 0.05, then we know that there is a 5% risk of committing type 1 error if the null hypothesis is true. If we perform 10,000 experiments where the null hypothesis is true, then we expect to make 500 type 1 errors. For example, if we would check the expression of 10,000 genes in an experiment between two treatments that have exactly the same effect on the gene expressions, which means that the null hypothesis is true for all the 10,000 comparisons, then we would expect to get 500 false positive results if we use 10,000 t-tests with a significance level of 5%. In other words, 500 genes would be considered to be significantly expressed because their associated p-values are less than 0 0.05. However, these are all false positives. To reduce the risk to commit a type 1 error, we can reduce the significance level to, for example, 0 0.01. However, the problem is that we then will increase the risk of committing a type 2 error. In the next lectures, we'll discuss the probability of making a type 2 error as well as the statistical power and sample size. Thanks for watching.